What's up everybody? Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts and today's video is going to be a summary of what we've done in the past two years and what we have going forward for year three. That's coming up next. So a couple things I asked and I wanted to go through was some of the accomplishments that we, that we, <laughs> accomplishments that we, that we, I'm so, all right, so some of the things that we wanted to go over was our accomplishments. Mm -hmm. And the first one we wanted to add was we built and grew our relationship with Lisa and her team over at Farm Fresh Carolinas. Yeah, so Lisa's business was actually one of the few that really blew up during the COVID crisis, right? Because she does home produce delivery. So it's actually been really exciting. We got to partner with her and we've managed to send a lot of customers that normally would have maybe just come to us directly through her. And we've been really fortunate that she's an awesome person to work with. Her system's really easy to uh, go on an order for all of the customers. And it's been a lifesaver for us when it comes to home delivery, balancing that, balancing COVID, and still trying to grow the home delivery aspect of our business. Yeah, if you guys are anywhere in remotely the Charlotte area region and you need fresh produce, definitely look up Farm Fresh Carolinas. Our next achievement is um, something that we care deeply about, which is we were able to sponsor Carolina Wildlife, which is something that's awesome because Alex and I are big on animals and we want to help those that don't have a voice. So RJ and both obviously are big animal lovers. I have fostered for numerous organizations. RJ has fostered, we both Bailey. have dogs. And we wanted, to, you know, one of the things that we've always said when we go into business is we wanna be able to give back. We wanna do good, right? We wanna help the community. And this group does a lot of tremendous work in terms of wildlife rehab. They spend a lot of hours helping animals such as raccoons and possums and birds, things that maybe people don't necessarily view as uh, as important, but they are, especially when it comes to the entire ecosystem. And we are very fortunate that we are in a position that we can use some of the money that we're generating, some of the income, and donate and give back to them. So we are proud sponsors of a monthly donation to them. Yeah, and we'll leave a link to their website down below. So go check them out, see what they're all about. They're really good people, and we believe in the work they do. Yeah. The next accomplishment that we are super proud about is one of our very first restaurants that we reached out to is still partnered with us and still going strong. Yeah, so... The very first restaurant that we reached out to, I remember we were so nervous. I think we actually did a video on this and we were, we went in, we took samples and we were talking with the chef, and the, or the chef and the sous chef and we just were hesitantly waiting to see what they were going to say and they were like, these are great. We want to place an order. Yes. Like we want you guys to, uh, you know, be our vendor for these micros and we were so excited about it. So we feel very honored one that this restaurant who's well known in the area they have great leadership and a great owner so they have successfully one survived covid they've actually grown their business during covid even though they've only been allowed to do 50 percent capacity for over a year at this point and they have been just tremendous partners to us we have grown our business with them we supply to them weekly and they use our uh, micros in a number of their dishes so that's been really cool to just see that the very first person that took a chance on us is still someone that we have a strong relationship with. Yeah. And the next one, I don't know if it's an accomplishment per se, but it is learning about this industry mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, the farmer's market and what people are really looking for when they go there, what they're wanting out of us. So for us, I think, you know, we came in, we knew some of the industry, but it's also something that hasn't really been tapped, which is why we've made so many videos on this for you guys, because it was so difficult to find information and find quality information, like what people are looking for and what you can do and the different avenues you could take. So we feel really proud that we've managed to kind of set ourselves up as, you know, SMEs in this industry and kind of, we still want to grow. There's still so much for us to learn, but we are proud of what we've accomplished and how we've been able to kind of share that information back with you guys, because we like to make sure that we're sharing quality information. And part of that is knowing that we've put in the effort to educate ourselves to understand, you know, this is how long product can last. If you do certain things here, you can help product last longer. You can shorten the lifespan if you do certain things, right? Certain containers are better than others. Certain soil levels, you know, there's all these different conditions that go into the quality product you're offering. And also the quality uh, customer service you offer to the people you partner with. So we feel, I guess, very proud of the fact that we've stuck with it. And even though there's been some tremendous up and downs with this industry that we are still going strong. 
Yeah, and, and just to chime in on that, it is, it's, we are very proud of ourselves because like Alex said, there's very few information around urban farming. And if you guys watch our very, very, very first couple videos, you would, you will know that we weren't always set on microgreens. We wanted to follow what Curtis Stone did, which was a lot of true, true urban farming where you transform your front yard and your backyard into high rotation crops like lettuce and spinach. Obviously it didn't, it didn't go that route due to a lot of factors, but we had to teach ourselves how to pivot and go towards microgreens because we didn't want to just give up right then and there, right? We, we had to self-teach ourselves how to grow microgreens and not only that, just the business aspect of things also. That's a whole nother beast. We had to learn how to grow and test microgreens certain product and then we had to learn the business side of it. I mean, it, it really is easy to look over all the stuff that, that we had taught ourselves and where we are now. And mind you, we've done this all while still working our full-time jobs, yeah. right? Yeah. And RJ and I, you know, live in separate households, like we live on different parts of the city. So there's a lot of logistics that go into us coordinating to make this stuff happen. So we give ourselves credit for it. Yeah. The next accomplishment is pretty much towards you guys. Because of this, we were able to build an awesome online community. We have, honestly, this is super exciting because Alex and I always talk about it, but we have regulars posting on comments and asking when we when Alex and I start to slack off and we've been missing for like a week mm -hmm. or two where we where we promise that we will do better yeah. you guys start to comment like hey when's the next content we're looking forward to it and we love seeing comments like that all the time when we say that we're like damn we really got to get on out people are relying on us yeah. to, to produce content and they're looking pretty much up to us right so we built this community and we're only here because of you guys. So this accomplishment, really, we, we hand it out to you guys and the support and constantly, you know, liking us, commenting, watching our videos. So, yeah. Yeah, and asking questions. You guys involved yeah. when you ask questions, even if it's not maybe directly related to what that video is about, it's just like operating the business. We really appreciate it. One, we feel honored that you, you know, respect us enough to ask us those questions and trust us. And two, it makes us also think like, okay, maybe this is something that we should work on doing a video about or discuss more because clearly there's multiple people asking questions on this topic. But thank you guys so much. We absolutely appreciate it. And please, uh, we'll continue to support you guys with good content. So what are our goals going into year three? The first goal we have is we obviously want to deliver growth and kind of pivot some of our focus in the industry. <laughs> what <was that? laughs> so what are our goals going into year three? So obviously we want to deliver growth. That is just something I think most companies talk about, but it's particularly of interest to us because of COVID this past year, many of the restaurants that we were supplying have cut back on their deliveries or maybe not taking anything at all because they aren't even, they're barely maintaining an operating rhythm as it is. And so it was very difficult for us to try to justify reaching out to restaurants and approach them when we already knew they were struggling so much. But we'd like to be able to pivot and take our business in a direction to focus on maybe some other avenues that we can increase some of the revenue. So one is obviously home deliveries. As we mentioned, our partner is super strong and she's been growing. Um, she grew a lot over the past year and we're hoping to continue seeing that grow. We are hoping to join another farmer's market, which was a previous way that we were bringing in income. Obviously with COVID, it was very difficult to, most of the markets I think actually were closed down around us in particular, but we're hoping, we know some of them are gonna be open this year and we want to make sure we are involved in those because that was a great way for us to meet a lot of customers and get our name out there, but also just get feedback from the community for what they like, what they don't like, maybe what they're looking for. And then third, we have an idea that RJ has kind of come up with and it's another way we'd like to pivot our business model. Yeah, so with this whole pandemic going on right now, we are having to almost proactively evolve and kind of look mm -hmm. ahead, right? So we're not going to change dramatically, but we are looking into different avenues we can sell our microgreen products. So obviously, as Alex said, farmers markets and restaurants and home deliveries are our main source right now. But if we can create other avenues such as this next one, which is we are looking into seeing so alex and i are kind of in an r d process right now research and development on how we can turn the microgreens into powder right so we can maybe start looking into targeting more of the the health uh sector like gnc and seeing if we can sell our product there and there's going to be a lot to it because you know this is where 
Alex and I are gonna have to learn a lot about this because when you're selling microgreens, there we are, how do I wear this? We're, we're exempt from certain things. Right, because we don't process them. Yeah. We've, I think we've talked about this in a previous video somewhere. Yeah. But because you don't process them. So altering, like we, we're not altering. Right, like for example, if you take oranges and you grow oranges, you can sell them. But if you take oranges and then you juice them, you're now altering and processing them. And so now you become, uh, I guess, subject to a lot of FDA kind of restrictions and regulations. But since the microgreens are basically considered like a vegetable, you're just basically cutting them, harvesting, and then selling them. We don't have to be as careful because we're not doing anything to the product. Literally, we're cutting it, putting it in a container, and selling it to you. But if we're going to be processing them here, there's going to be a number of regulations that we'll have to be aware of. Right, so there's going to be a lot of research that we're going to have to do here, make sure that we're doing everything legally and covering ourselves. Mm -hmm. But more excitingly, we're going to purchase a, a dehydrator, right? Mm -hmm. Something that we can mm -hmm. look to dehydrate the microgreens. And then you can, from, from all the research I've initially done, from what I can tell, you can just use a normal food processor to go ahead and grind it up into a powder. And then we're gonna look into packaging and then labeling and seeing seeing what we can do from there. But it is exciting, but it is something that we're looking forward to doing this year and kind of pivoting and evolving and seeing how far we can take this avenue. So that's obviously the big growth potential there for us, or at least something that's gonna take a lot of effort. And then we will still consistently be reaching out to restaurants if we see new possible business partners in that sense. Well, absolutely. They are still our main source of revenue and the main people who at this time are using microgreens on a regular basis, besides our customers, like our just single family uh, customers. But that's kind of what we're looking forward to in terms of growing revenue. Then another thing we really have talked about, we want to be consistent with creating good content for you guys. We absolutely see the content or the comments asking like, hey, where have you guys been? You know, are you putting something out? And we know that we have allowed ourselves to slack here and there when it comes to being busy. Or for example, I uh, had COVID the first two weeks this year, so I have to quarantine, so we couldn't do anything. And we are going to make sure that we are consistent with delivering you guys good content that is useful and hopefully stuff that you guys will find um, helps build your business. Yeah, that's the important part is producing good content for you guys. Alex and I don't wanna just pump out videos that have absolutely no meaning or you guys don't get anything out of it. So. A lot of this is Alex and I bumping our heads together. We're trying to get good topics, something that we would find ourselves useful mm -hmm. if we're trying to grow into this avenue. So that's the most important part is giving and producing good content for you guys. Along that, if you have any ideas, drop them in the comments section so we will definitely talk about it and see if it's something we can help out with. Yep. And last but not least, we talk about it all the time, but we really want to just do more good. We want to pick probably another partner or two to hopefully sponsor. Uh, you know, we we believe in helping the community. We think businesses should help their community. That's the people who are supporting you and in return, you should really be focused on supporting them. So we will be making sure that we pick another group or two to be sponsors of or to donate time, whatever we can. But make sure that we're using our platform and our avenue to help other people. If you guys enjoyed that video, please hit that like and subscribe button as it helps other entrepreneurs like you find our content. It also helps encourage us to know that we're putting out useful and helpful information that you guys enjoy. We will see you sprouts next time.